morning, everybody. The Galapagos Islands are about 560 miles west of Ecuador, right along the equator. And it was on this date, September 15, in 1835, that His Majesty's ship, the Beagle, pulled into the Galapagos Islands, and one of the crew was a very young Charles Darwin. This is Wedgwood, China. Charles Darwin married a Wedgwood, so he was independently wealthy. So here's a picture of Darwin as a young boy. He loved to be outside. He loved to collect plants and things. He found school, particularly the sitting at a desk, uh, to be pretty boring. And this is his beetle collection his actual beetle collection. And he was fascinated by beetles, but you'll notice how well they're labeled. He was also a very meticulous note taker. In the late 1700s and into the 1800s, Alexander von Humboldt, a German, traveled all through the New World and made some pioneering kinds of observations about nature. And Darwin was very impressed by von Humboldt and like this idea of travel to see nature. So here's the beagle. Darwin was asked to be on the beagle because the captain uh, was looking for somebody of his social equal and Darwin fit the bill. And the goal of the beagle was to map the coast of South America. So there was nothing in the original voyage that pointed toward the earth-shaking conclusions that Darwin would come to. He was simply there to be a social equal of the captain. So this picture of Darwin on the Beagle is, it's kind of clever because it makes him look kind of like uh, just a rich young man with nothing better to do, but he did collect lots of stuff and you see the magnifying glass in his hand. So early on the Beagle stopped at Cape Verde off the coast of Africa. A lot of the uh, ships crossing the Atlantic would stop here. And while there, Darwin noticed what others had noticed, that in the volcanic rock were fossils of seashells. And there was a big debate at the time on where seashell fossils came from. Some thought the flood, like in the Bible, others had different theories. As the Beagle progressed along the coast of South America, it came to Brazil, pictured here. And Darwin was really amazed at the variety of life in the rainforest. Farther down in Patagonia, in the southern part of South America, Darwin was involved in excavating dinosaur bones, many of which he had sent back to England. And almost every place the ship stopped, he would send stuff back because he had some money, the Wedgwood money, to do that. The very tip of Argentina is Tierra del Fuego. This is very remote. It's very desolate. It's not that far from Antarctica. And this is Darwin's drawing of the inhabitants of uh, Tierra del Fuego. And he was struck by how primitive they lived. And in a way, they weren't that much different from animals in terms of staying alive. Galapagos Islands, west of Ecuador, this is our event. On September 15 in 1835, the Beagle pulled in to one of the islands. There are many islands in the Galapagos group. Darwin was collecting already, and these are mockingbirds that he collected. This is a photograph of the actual birds collected by Darwin, and notice they have different beaks depending on which island they came from. And the tortoises of the Galapagos are also marked by different shells depending on which island they came from. So this is all swirling around in Darwin's mind during this trip and after. Alfred Russell Law, uh, Wallace also came up with a theory of natural selection, which was kind of like Darwin. This is a story all in its own right, how these two guys agreed or disagreed. But it was in 1859 that Darwin's book came out, uh, Origin of Species. I think what surprises people is this is 23 years after his voyage on the Beagle. So he had a long time to think about what he was going to say uh, in this book. And as we study the life of Darwin, I think we can agree with him 
that the life on our planet is beautiful and varied and definitely worth our study.